So what is a distributed system and why should you care? Basically, a distributed system is not a centralized system. So what's a centralized system? A centralized system is one where the state of your system and the program is stored on a single computer. For example, you might be taking notes on this video using Microsoft Word on the computer in front of you. In order to take those notes, Word will store the document in memory and periodically save your state to disk. If your computer breaks, then you're out of luck. You can't take notes anymore and you can't read your notes unless you happen to be lucky enough to have backups and you can restore from backups onto a new computer. With a distributed system, the state of your program and the program itself is divided over more than one computer. So back to the Word example, if instead of saving on your local disk, you stored your document in Dropbox, then if your computer fails, you can just borrow your friend's computer, load the document from Dropbox, and keep on working. Great, you're happy. Your system is fault tolerant because your state is divided over a more than a computer. You're taking advantage of all the computers that they have at Dropbox. If one of their computers fails, it probably has your document replicated over more than one computer there as well, and you can keep on going. So centralized systems are simpler. They're easier to understand because you only have to consider what's going on in a single computer. They can be faster for a single user because there are no network round trips involved in running them. But a distributed system, by contrast, can be more reliable. If a computer fails, that doesn't mean you're doomed. You can keep on working for many types of failure. Um, a distributed system tends to be more scalable, and what do I mean by that is you can serve more users with a smaller number of computers due to the luxury of time sharing. And the downside of distributed systems is they're more complex. Now wait a second, you might be worried because complexity is bad, right? Complexity, it's hard to build a complex system that is actually also more reliable, and I can admit, you're right. Complex systems are hard to build right. This is one of the reasons why distributed systems is considered to be an advanced topic in computer science, is because, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, it's hard. But it's worth it. You can, you can solve some really important problems using distributed systems, which are not possible to solve using centralized systems, even though when they fail, it's often the consequences are really bad. And this is only because people only use distributed systems as a tool to solve very important problems. So of course when they fail, it's bad. It's because they're important. So let's consider some examples of distributed systems. In order to watch this video, you had to go to a website, and in order to look up that website, such as youtube.com, you had to look it up using DNS, or the Domain Name Service. DNS is a distributed table of host names to IP addresses that is divided over a number of machines around the globe so that there's always a computer close to you in which you can do your lookups. You would study DNS as a good example of distributed cache coherence, and it's something we're going to look at a little bit later on. Facebook and Google use distributed systems internally extensively. They use them to store your data, they use them to do processing of data over a large cloud of computers. Uh, they use them to do the serving systems, which you interact with when you interact with these services on a daily basis. Um, both of these companies and more have proven that it's possible to build distributed systems at a truly massive scale that are fast enough to solve a large class of very important problems, and also that they can ma be made extremely reliable. If you ever send email, that's another place where you're taking advantage of distributed systems. There are mail servers around the globe that all talk to each other, and your email gets relayed through a series of servers when it goes to its destination. If one of those servers fails, email doesn't stop for everyone, it just stops for the subset of users that are waiting for messages that were going to be relayed through the failed server. And when it comes back up, it starts, everything starts working again. Now, you may be getting the impression at this point that distributed systems were developed to solve internet scale problems. And, well, actually, distributed systems as a field wasn't originally developed for the internet. It was developed before the internet. 
Um, distributed systems were the, the problems that, are, that we classify as distributed systems problems were originally solved to build the landline-based phone network, which was actually a global, very reliable, fault-tolerant network. And later on, we added more techniques in order to deal with mobile nodes in order to build out the cell phone network. So maybe you could say distributed systems are most useful for network systems. Well, yeah, except there are networks in more places than you think. For example, in your car, there's at least one network, maybe more than one network, using what's called the CAN bus protocol. All of the electronic components in your car are networked together. So, for example, you might be driving your car and you turn on the stereo and the car stereo crashes. The last thing you want that to do is send a message out on your CAN bus network that crashes your engine control unit, which causes your engine to failure, fail, which might lead to an actual crash of the car. That would be bad. So, distributed systems techniques are used inside the car to help you with fault isolation. Distributed systems are used elsewhere in transportation, too. Traffic lights on large cities are often networked together in order to smooth traffic flows across the city, in a hopefully fault-tolerant fashion. Train control networks are used to make sure that the trains run on time and that they don't run two trains on the same track at the same time. Airplanes are my favorite pet example because I'm a pilot and an aviation geek. Um, if you look inside airplanes, all of the avionics in a plane typically are joined together, often through an RS-232 bus between the various avionics. In this plane, for example, the GPS knows where the plane is and where the pilot intends to fly. The engine monitor is keeping track of the engine and all of the parameters there, fuel flow, exhaust gas temperatures, um, cylinder temperatures, it's basically watching the health of the engine. And one of the things the engine monitor has to do is it has to warn the pilot if it thinks you're going to run out of fuel before you reach your destination. How can it do that? Well, it learns from the GPS where the destination is and how long until you get there, and it knows through its own monitoring how much fuel is being consumed right now. It's simple math. But what if the GPS were to fail? The engine monitor can no longer do that job. So, it's got a fault-tolerant strategy. It simply tells the pilot, hey, I'm no longer able to do this calculation. Please look at the fuel gauges and do it yourself using a calculator. Great. But that's not the only place where distributed systems are used in planes. Air traffic control is an example of a human-powered distributed system. The state of the system and the program is divided between the pilots who are participating the air traffic controllers, and the computers the air traffic controllers are using to communicate with each other and to coordinate all of the traffic. Actually, once you start looking for distributed systems, you start seeing them everywhere. I was trying to think of good examples for this talk, and I started thinking we're in election season now. Is the U.S. electoral voting system really just an example of distributed consensus with Byzantine fault tolerance? Okay, I've taken things too far. I'm sorry. As you can tell, I get really excited about distributed systems. I've actually spent the past 10 years, ever since getting my PhD, working in industry on distributed systems, trying to make them more scalable and faster and easier to use. And what I'm hoping to do with this series of videos is make them easier to understand. Hopefully, by the end of these videos, you will know how and when you should build your own distributed systems and also have a better understanding of how they work.